Uh, tell Brother Truman if you need that ride on Saturday, uh, make sure you get hooked up, ready to go, uh, and pray to God to help and God to do some good work. We're thankful for this uh, foundation and for uh, what David Moreland and all of those stand for and all of those do. Appreciate that word you shared with us. In the book of John, in the book of John, if, if you have a Bible, that we're right back where we was last week, 2 John, begin reading where we left off last week, verse number 5. Second John, verse number 5. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that you walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that ye lose not those things which ye have wrought, but that ye receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not, not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Having many things to write unto you, I would, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that her joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. I want to talk to you quickly, if I could, on how to love as the Bible teaches how to love as the Bible teaches. And of course, John is pretty much his theme is how to walk in love. Uh, God wants his people to be a loving people, and our life ought to be uh, characterized by a uh, love of God. And it ought to be shown, it ought to be felt, it ought to be practiced. I believe that what we need to, tonight is a revival of love back in our homes, back in our lives, back in our churches. And this passage is going to talk to us about how to love as the Bible teaches. And it's uh, several things that we would like to look at. And so first of all, notice if you would, that we need to practice the truth. Practice the truth. In fact, John said, and now I beseech thee, lady. And John, you, I remind you that John, the great apostle of love, and God has certainly transformed his own life and changed him. And he's talking about this dear lady who is a stronghold in a congregation who's been a blessing in her family. And John writes to her, he's talking as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that you love one another. He's talking about, he says, it's a, I'm not writing a new commandment. Uh, he has not received a new revelation, uh, some false revelation. Our teachers is always coming up with new revelations. I tell you what we need is a get back to the old revelation. Amen. Uh, people talking about a new ideal today. I wish we'd just get back and live the old one. I like the old-fashioned way. I like something that works. Amen. And so he says it's, it's not a new commandment. It's been around a long time that you love one another. I don't know anything clearer in the Word of God than the very ideal that we need to be saved, we need to show forth love. In fact, John 13, 35, just simply said, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciple. Now, I know there's a lot of people got an ideal of how they're going to prove they're saved, how thick a Bible they're going to wear, uh, carry, or how, how big of a suit, or how, how they can dress, or how they wear their hair, or how they do it. I want to tell you, bless God, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciple, because ye, ye have loved one for another. I, I believe we just need to come back some old-fashioned love. Amen. I think John is just saying we need to practice some things that work. Amen. And we need to practice love in daily living. By the way, this is a walk we have. This is a behavior. This is how we carry on. This is how we act. Uh, we, we've got to understand that 
Our life is a life of love, and we walk it because brethren of God and love in us. I, I'm glad today uh, to know that if you practice love and it's in your life, uh, people's going to know you love them. Amen. I, I, I like to see people practice what they preach. Amen. I, and practice what they teach. Amen. I, and if you're going to talk about love, and John talked about it a lot, and they ought to practice it now. Uh, we know that the Bible says God is a God of love. And I want to tell you, if God's going to tell you that he's a God of love, I'll tell you right now that he'll practice that love. And I know in this whole world sometimes that you may feel and wonder about when some bad experience happens, whether God really loves you and the devil might come in and try to say he doesn't. But I want to tell you, God has proved his love. And if you've got any doubt tonight, just take one more look to Calvary and look yonder where we see God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. The Bible says in Romans 5 and 8 that God committed his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God loved you before you ever loved him. Amen. In fact, I love God because he first loved me. And God proved that love. I think today that it behooves us that we practice this love. I, I believe that. Now, it's old and it's not, it's, it's not something to come up newly. Uh, it's in the Old Testament, the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Now here God just simply saying is, you need to learn to practice love. Now, Brother Billy, you say, why should I practice love? Well, I'll say a couple things. Number one, you ought to do it because love is demanded. Now, love is one of those things that he said, you ought to do. Here is a command. Here is something that God is demanding. And he says it right there in verse number 5. And now beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that ye had from the beginning that ye love one another. Now you believe that when he said love one another, that he meant what he said? Well, sure he did. And by the way, we're confused about what love is today. But I'll tell you that word love right there is a word is we get the agape love. Agape love is a selfless love. It's, it's not that we hear today and people think today they think they're in love. Brother, I tell you what a lot of young people, middle-aged and older, they're in lust. They're not in love. And a lot of people don't know what real love is because love, it's real, can only come from God. But here he says, here's love, a selfless love like God. You know, I've discovered one day that the greatest truth that I think that anybody could ever lay hold on is that God loves you personally. You'll never find a greater truth in all of your life. You'll never find something that will help you in a, in a struggle of life like that right there will someday. That God loves you. And brother, because God loves you, he says, I beseech you, lady, as I've wrote this, that you love one another. Now here John takes a look back to the foundation of everything that's Christian. The foundation of everything is Christian is love. The love of Christ, that's true love. And John is saying right here, now here's it, it's all the bottom line, is we got to love. You know the greatest thing there is, is what the Bible says is love. Isn't that what he said in 1 Corinthians 13, 13? And now abideth faith, is faith good? Sure it is. Is faith important? Sure it is. Hebrews 11 and 6 says it's impossible to please God without faith. You can't, you, you, you can't please him without it. Faith is important. And he says here by faith and hope. Is hope good? Or you got to be kidding. When everything else in the world is turning loose, you need something to anchor you. And hope is an anchor to your soul. To know it's something better is coming and it's going to get better after a while. But wait a minute. Here's three. Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. There's nothing bigger, nothing greater than love. You say, Brother Billy, you think love's greater than faith. Well, I don't know what you think, but I know the Bible's right. And the Bible said, here's three, but the greatest of these is love. You see, Paul said it in 1 Corinthians 13, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. 
And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have, have all faith, though that I can move mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. I want to tell you the greatest thing you could ever do is just love. I don't care if you're a gifted orator and you could say those long phrases and big words and you could just get people's attention. But if there's no love in it, brother, it's not worth much. You might be a miracle worker, but if you don't have love in you, brother, you ain't got much. I'm telling you, I don't care what you've got. I don't care what you're doing. And brother, if you don't have any love in what you're doing, you're, you're not what God wants you to be. That, I'll tell you what, best preaching you'll ever find will be from a preacher that's got a heart that loves you. Best teaching you'll ever have will be from a teacher that's teaching the Word of God because he loves you. I tell you, friend, that's the only kind that God will recognize. Anything else is tinkling brass and sounding somber. It's a lot of noise. It's a lot of noise. We need to love. We need to love. We need to be loved. We need to let it shine. In John 15 and 12, this is, a, this is the commandment that you love one another. God says love. You say, Brother Billy, why is, it, why is it so repetitious throughout the Bible about love? Why is that? I want to tell you, I found it a long time ago. If you find somebody in love, you'll find somebody that doesn't have any burden about what they're doing for God. You show me somebody that loves God, and I'll show you somebody that don't care to teach kids. I don't care how dirty they are, how, how snot no, nose they are. They'll look down at them and wipe it out and just look at them and smile and, and pick them up and hug them. Uh, you, you show me somebody that loves God and got, got a heart, I'll show you somebody that's over here in the Awana program and going to those classes and taking time for those kids and going through the memorization of the Scripture and, and spending time. You show me somebody that's got the love of God. I'll, I'll show you somebody don't care to drive a van, start early and come back late. You know what makes everything a lot easier when you're serving God is love is in your heart. You, you know, uh, it's the same thing for a spouse. You know, you, these poor wives, they, they don't get any pay for getting their husband's clothes laid out. By the way, I'll struggle with that next week. Pray for me. One of the big things, I'll have to do my own clothing next week. My wife don't get any, she don't get any pay. I mean, what does she get for all those things she does for me? What does she get for all of that? Work, works day in and day out. Uh, and does, you say, Brother Billy, I just wonder sometimes, why does she do that? Bless God, you know I do too. Amen. But you know what it is? I tell you, she loves me. Love, love, you know, love will do it, amen? Hey, you let a mommy have a love for a kid, and I'll tell you, ain't nothing in this world more important than that kid to her. You show somebody that's got some love in their heart, I'll show you somebody that's going to be actively involved and never complain about it either because it's just what it does, love. It's like that little boy. He was carrying his brother, and somebody said, isn't he heavy? And he's struggling under the load, and he looked up at him. Oh, no. You see, he's my brother. Makes a difference, don't it? It makes a difference. You see, when you got love, I think the secret of service is love. I hear he talks about the demand, but he also talks about the defined. Notice love defined in verse number 6. The verse says, and this is love. This is it, that you walk after his commandments. This is a commandment that you have here from the beginning. You should walk in it. the commandment. John, John tells us here, here's, here's a commandment, and, and here, here it is, walking as he's taught you. Walk. John said, walk in the commandments you've been given. And John said, here it is. Uh, it's all here. Uh, you know, if you ever wonder if somebody's saved or not, you know what's really proof of someone's salvation? Nothing more than love. The Bible says in 1 John 3 and 10, this, by, this, by this the children of God is manifest and the children of the devil. In verse 14, the Bible says, We know we pass from death unto life because we love the brethren. 
Now, if you got a problem with somebody, you probably got something that hangs a big doubt over you. Because, brother, one way to know you're saved is, is that love that's inside of you that you care. Amen. I, I know Paul's writing had been circulated by this time, and many have been hearing about what Paul had wrote. And Paul dealt with this issue in Romans 13 and 8 when he said, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth one another has fulfilled the law. And then he said, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Uh, and so he deals with out of the scripture. And if we had time, we would too. But the Bible's done defined love. And if you go to 1 Corinthians 13, it gives you a long list of things that said this is what love is all about. But notice not only we practice the truth, but notice quickly we protect the truth. In verses 7 through 11, John reminds the writer here to walk in love. And then he moves uh, to a second purpose of this letter. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh this is a deceiver and also is an antichrist they doesn't believe that jesus came in the flesh these are a deceiver and today there is deceivers in fact there's a real a real danger of the deceiver coming today in verse 7 and 8 the bible says for many deceivers are entered into the world where, where you think they are well, they're in Whitley County. Uh, they're in the school system. Uh, they're, they're, un, they're in the workplace. Uh, they're in the marketplace. Uh, those kind of deceivers, it's not something that you can recognize immediately. They just often disguise, but they're deceivers everywhere today. My, I want to tell you, there's a lot of them. They confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, and they're an antichrist. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Amen. Now, John said many deceivers have entered in. They're imposters wandering about, misleading people, and they don't believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But Jesus Christ was virgin-born son of God, a deceiver is in this liberal crowd today and we still have a lot of people uh, today who are leading astray and brethren they're deceiving many and it's going to get worse I, I probably would have never believed that america would be in the shape it's in right now i would have never thought in june 2015 that i would have had to look at a country who had legalized homosexuality i would have never thought that uh, by any means at 2020 that this country would no longer be a Christian country but become a Muslim country. How does something like that come about? It comes about because of deceivers that's coming into this country. And people listen to them. And there's a lot of them today who are misleading people. You say, well, any religion's okay. No, any religion's not okay. I want to tell you, you say, well, Brother Billy, what's the difference between a false religion and a true religion, and by the way, you know, uh, uh, I, I've, I've often wondered about uh, why people, it's saved by the grace of God, just can't work together to get along and go to heaven, amen? Uh, you know, people used to have little quarrels among Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist. Uh, you know, if you're saved by the grace of God, I don't know why we want to be trying to quarrel and whenever the devil's out there full speed ahead trying to do damage. I think we ought to just pull herself together and give him a nod on his head amen i mean we got false religion and muslim movement coming into this country and we need everybody to take a stand for jesus you say well what's right brother billy listen to this i want to tell you what's right what's right is a religious group that believes jesus christ come from God, virgin born, and, and brought us salvation, and that he's the way to heaven, and he is the only way. There is no other, and anybody who believes Jesus is the way is going to make it into the kingdom of God. 
Uh, we can fuss about anything else you want to fuss about, but I want to tell you when there's a Muslim religion comes into this country and they want to pit down Jesus Christ, bless God, this world ought not listen to that garbage. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the answer, the hope, and the only way. By the way, you know the Bible says you look to yourself, you lose not your reward. He says, you, you know, you need to take a stand. You need to love Jesus, and you need to keep living for him and doing what's right. John talks about the elect lady here. And he says, watch, watch out. Look to yourself. Watch here. Uh, if we could get it up on the screen, and I wouldn't do me no good if I could get it up on the screen uh, because... <clears throat> Buses are getting ready to pull out. Amen. But anyway, bless God, God's called us to, uh, to take a stand and what to live our life, what to love Jesus, and what to do what he's called us to do. And, and I want to tell you, we need to walk in love. But walking in love will walk right. And love will take a stand. And love will do right. It'll always be where it needs to be at the right time. Amen. All righty, let's stand. We'll get one verse of a song. If you need to come, there's a decision you need to make. We'll let you do it. I can see them getting ready to go and mount the buses. Amen. Uh, they're going to be pulling out here in a few moments. But thank God for our kids over there. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word of God. Thank God we need to take and love the Lord, live right, do right. We'll, we'll see some good things come about. We'll do it together. Amen. Jesus Christ, our hope of glory. Amen. We're going to sing one verse. If God spoke to you tonight, you need to make a decision. We want you to come on this one verse. Amen. God help you. Will you come? We're going to protect the truth.